Okay, everybody, I hope you're enjoying the new format. Um, it's quicker to upload and easier for me, even though I know some of you miss seeing my beautiful face, but it's audio is the main thing for now. So we're doing page 17, Yud Zayin, Talmud Bavli, Berachot. We're going back to the previous page, one line. It says, Rav Safra, Batar, Siluta, Achi, Amar. Rav Safra would end off his playing prayers like this. He said, May it be your will, God, to place peace in the heavenly. Um, Rashi explains between the angels of the nations in heaven, because everything in the earth is a mirror of what happens in the, what's first decreed in the heavens. That's why, parenthetically, the Gra says, O se shalom bim rumav, hu barachamav yaseh shalom aleinu. First there needs to be peace in heaven, and then that peace should reflect onto the ground. So we, we're praying that there shouldn't be any conflict between the guardian angels of the different nations. Uve palmalia shalmata, and the earthly nation. There shouldn't be uh, civil wars and wars there should be peace between the Torah students that learn the Torah for the right reason to know God and the other ones that are just learning Torah to get rich or honor there should be peace between them and he would say whoever is learning Torah for ulterior motives it should be God's will they should learn it for the right reasons Rabbi Alexander would End off his prayer like this. He said, God, please may it be your will to put us in the corner of light. Do not put us in the corner of darkness. And may, may, may our heart not ache. And may our, our eyes not get darkened. Some say this was the prayer of Hamnuna, where Rav Alexandria Batar de Matzli Amar Hachi. Some say no, Rabbi Alexander would actually pray this new version. Ribon Almin, Master of the World, of the Worlds. Galui veyadu lefanecha sheretzonenu laasod etzoncha. It's clear and evident that we want to do your will. Umi ma'akev. And what is stopping us from doing your will? Seor Sheba Isa. The yeast in the flour, which is this Yetzahara. And the Mabfarshim explains the two ways the Satan doesn't let us get close to God is like the yeast through Ga'ava, haughtiness, that you take credit to yourself instead of God, and laziness which is the symbol of chametz, that w that's why we need to eat matzah for seven, eight days, and burn the chametz. Yeshibut malchiot. And the other reason why we can't get close to God is because the non-Jews pervert us. And we're subjugated. May Bashiach come and save us from the exile, and we could serve you with a full heart. Rava would end up his prayers like this. He said, God, until I was born, I was unworthy. Even now that I'm born, I'm unworthy. It's like I wasn't born. I'm just like a piece of dirt in my life. And for sure after I die. I'm like a vessel in front of you that's full of shame and regret. May it be your will, God. We say this on Yom Kippur, by the way, this prayer. He said, may it be your will, God, that I shouldn't sin anymore. And those sins that I've done to you, forgive me with your... Mercy, your tremendous mercy, but do not give me hardship and bad sicknesses. 
V'hainu vidu de Ravuna zuta de biyom kipura. This is exactly what, um, like I said before, they would say on the eve of Yom Kippur, before we eat the Sudam of Seket. This happens to be our tradition. I don't know if the Ashkenazim say it. Mar bere de Ravina ki avim esayim salut amarachi. Mar, and this is actually the halacha, this is what we say after Ose Shalom. Elohai netzor leshoni mira. God, stop my tongue from saying evil. Like lying and saying Lashon Hara. And the people that curse me, may I have so much patience, which is the greatest of all virtues, that I shouldn't answer their curses and just be quiet. Then And may I, my heart, may my soul be like dirt to everybody. Open my heart to the Torah and may I always run after mitzvahs. And save me from bad encounters, from the Yetzahara, from a bad woman, from all detrimental encounters in that could happen in the world. Whoever is seeking to do bad to me, quickly you should annul and cancel out his bad, evil conspiracy against me. May be accepted the words of my heart, God, my rock, and my Savior. Rav Sheshet, after fast, he would say this prayer. And actually, this is brought down in Shulchan Aruch. It's a wonderful prayer. A lot of Sidurim don't have it, but the Ishmat Seach Sidur does have it. And... Uh, it's a very, 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 very meaningful prayer after you fast. You should say this. It says during the temple, a person if he sins, he brings an offering like a ram or a sheep and it's only he has to pay his m- money. And he gets forgiven. But now that I fasted, my fat of my body and my blood became reduced. May be your will, the blood and my body weight and my blood and fat that became diminished Consider it like an offering to you, like a korban, on, t- on top of your altar, and may I be worthy and accepted by you, vitritseni, be wanted by you. It says, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, when he would send, finish the book of Eov, job, he would say this, Sof adam lamut v'sof in the end, a person will die and an animal will be slaughtered. And everybody's going to die. Lucky and fortunate is a person that grows up in Torah, study. And studies Torah. He toils in Torah and makes God happy, his creator. He grows up with a good name and he passes away with a good name. 
And about such a person it says, Shlomo Tov Shem Mishem and Tov, a good name is better than the best perfume. Because they used to use oily perfumes. V'yom hamavit miyom And the day of death is more desirable than the day he was born. So the Midrash explains because it's like an empty ship that's going to a treasure island to get treasure. Before it goes, nobody's happy, but after it comes back and it went to the treasure island and brought back all the treasure and gold and silver and rubies and diamonds, that's the same reason why, parenthetically, the day of death is better than the day is born. Because when the guy's born, we don't know if he's going to be righteous, if he's going to grab those wonderful mitzvot and Torah, which are like the ultimate rubies and diamonds and better than the best platinum and silver. But now that he lived his life running after Torah and mitzvahs and good deeds, then his treasure... His boat is full of treasure because he came back from the treasure island to the next world and that's a time to rejoice. Rabbi Meir's constant saying, motto, was you should learn Torah with all your heart and all your soul to know God. To always, as much as possible, stay within the four corners of the Torah study hall. To learn Torah. We should, he said, may my Torah, your Torah be guarded in my heart. And before my eyes I should always fear God. Shemor picha mikolchet. You should always, we should always um, guard our mouth from saying anything sinful. The tahor ve kadosh atzmecha mikol ashama va'avon. We have to purify and make holy ourselves from any type of sin. Va'aniyeh imcha bechol makom. And then God will be with us in every instance. Margila de pune benavani. The constant verbiage and motto of the rabbis of Yavne was Ani, we're at the wide lines now, Ani Beria Vachavri Beria. I'm a creation of God and my friends are a creation of God. Wide lines, Ani Melachti Beir Vehu Melachto Besadeh. Me, the Torah scholar, I work in the city. The common Jew, he works in the fields because it used to be an agricultural society. I go up to go to my work and he goes up to go to his work. The same way I don't mess with his business, he doesn't mess with my business. Maybe I'm greater to him because I learned more Torah than him. No, Shanino Echada Marbe Echada Mamidu Vachikamin de Boshim Shamai. Basically, he's saying there should be peace between the Torah scholars and the regular people because I shouldn't think I'm more better than other people that don't learn as much Torah because the main thing, whether one learns a lot of Torah or little Torah, the main thing is that your heart and your position, your kavana, should be for the sake of God. Rashi says, Because whether a person brings a fancy korban of a bull, or a person brings a medium korban of two pigeons, or a very basic korban, Rashi says, of flour and water, korban mincha, all of them, God accepts all of them. Anybody, everybody according to his time, and his financial ability has to serve God with all his capability. If, whoever, if you do the best you can do, you're equal to, to everybody else in the eyes of God. Abai would always say his motto in life was, a person should always be arum be'yir'ah. You should always be cunning and conniving, Rashi explains. Use the most innovative technology 
and methodology to fear God. Tricks, use tricks, shortcuts to fear God. Ma'ane rach, every, a, answer everybody with a soft language. Meshiv chechma, he's going to cause anger to go down. You should always increase peace with your brothers and your family and with everybody. And even with the non-Jew that's in the marketplace. So in order that you should be loved in the heavens above and desired in the world below. And people should accept you. And therefore they want to learn Torah from you. So this is a wonderful thing that we said that Rabban Gamliel ben Zakai shaloi temo adam shalom meolam afilu nochim yeshud. Always you should tell any human being. Doesn't matter. The guy is a custodian, a trash picker, a garbage picker. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, he would always first say greetings, good morning, and hello to people that he would encounter in the shuk, in the marketplace. Margila de Puma de Rabba Tachlit Chokma Teshuvam Asim Tovin. Rava would always say the goal of wisdom is for us to repent and do good deeds. Because it's disgusting. You're defeating the purpose. If you learn Torah and review it, and then you kick away your parents and you act disgraceful to them, and to your Torah teacher, and somebody that's greater than you in Torah knowledge, or if you're outvoted, it says the beginning of knowledge and the whole, the Gra explains the reason and goal of knowledge is to fear God and to actually carry out the Torah. It's saying for the people that do it for the sake of God. And not for the people that start, study Torah for ulterior motives. And the Gemara says here something very, makes you dumbfounded. He says whoever learns Torah for the wrong reason, for ulterior motives, is better that he shouldn't be created. So Tosfot has a very important Tosfot here. He says, Im Tomar HaOmer this is a contradiction to the Gemara in Psachim, page 50, that says you always should start learning Torah and doing mitzvahs for ulterior motives, not for the sake of the mitzvah. Like that's how you give kids, you give them prizes, and then eventually to come lishma. So why is it here saying if you do the Torah for ulterior motives, it better you shouldn't be created? So Tosfas answers, you know, um, the Shalolishma that we're talking about here, Tosfot understands, is that you're learning Torah not for honor or just to get a good wife or get a, make a name for yourself or for money, but rather you're learning Torah so you lekanter, so you should make fun of it. That such a person that wants to disgrace the Torah. He's an atheist. He's a Bible critic. He just wants to learn Torah. Such a person, to make fun of it, it's better he shouldn't be created. But over there, Tosot explains, the Gemara Psachim says it's okay to learn Torah for the sake of people honoring you or for monetary gain or they're going to give you candy and gum. But the Rav Avadia brings in his Sefer and his Teshuvot from the Orachim HaKadosh, he argues on Tosfot. 
here. The Arachayim HaKadosh in his Sefer Rishon Letzion Alashas, he says that Hamor Sheba Yachsirei Lemutav the Torah has such a blinding light, like the light of the sun, that it's okay to start teaching somebody Torah for the first few sessions, even if the person is antagonistic of the Torah. Because the Hama'or Sheba, the light of Torah will bring him back to the right way. But, the Orachim says, if a person continues learning Torah after a year and is still making fun of the Torah, then such a person he would agree with is better shouldn't be created. Okay. The Gemara, moving right along, says, Mar Gila Puma de Rav, Rav would always say, He would say, the next world, heaven, or the world after Mashiach comes, there is no eating or drinking or sexual relations of fruitful and multiply, no business, no jealousy, no hatred, no keeping grudges. But rather, what is the next world? Ela sadikim yoshvim v'atereim b'roshem v'nehenim ziv ashkina. He says that the uh, righteous sit and their crowns are on their heads and they get pleasure from the rays of light of the God's presence. The Al Sheikh Hakadosh explains that. All the Torah you learn and good deeds and mitzvot that you do, those become different diamonds and a crown on your head. So the more mitzvot and Torah you learn, the greater your crown is going to be and that's going to be your everlasting glory because you use your time wisely. It says God trusts women more than men. Women are more spiritual and more holy and they're guaranteed a place in the next world more than men. In Yeshaya it says, Women, I trust you that you're going to um, be holy and spiritual and pure and you're going to come and be deserving to come to the world to come. Heaven. So it says, Amar lei Rav Chia Nashim v'may Zachian. Rav tell, told Rav Chia, women, how do they merit to go to the next world? Because Rav Yeruchem Levavitz from the Mir explains, V'chaye olam nata betocheinu. Since women don't have the positive commandment of learning Torah, and Torah is the ultimate light that we talked about in the next world, so how could they merit to get to the next world? They don't have to learn Torah. Because it says, Vishinantam Levanecha. So the Gemara ask, answers the reason and the way that women deserve the next world is, They take their children to the yeshiva, to the teacher of the Aleph Bet to learn Torah in the synagogue. And they let their husbands, they assist their husbands to go learn in the yeshiva, in the kolel, in the ben midrash, when I train the gavrayu, at the and they wait faithfully for their husbands to come back from yeshiva, even though it's in another town. When the rabbis would depart from each other, this is what they would say, Olam You should see your world in this world. Rashi explains that your life, you should, everything you need, your heart desires, you should get to while you're alive. And may you be deserving at the end of your life to go to the next world, to heaven. And may your tikva be forever and ever. May your heart 
dwell into wisdom, tevuna, understanding. May your mouth, may your, what, what comes out of your mouth always be wisdom. And it says that may your praises of God always come out of your mouth. That um, so again it says may your tongue bring forth song may your eyelids look straight forward before you this is the name of our synagogue it says may your eyes be enlightened by the light of the Torah and may your face shine like the brightness of the star Sky. May your li- lips utter knowledge. And may your kidneys rejoice in righteousness. And may your feet run to hear the words of the ancient of days, which in the this is a Kabbalistic reference to God, like in the book of Daniel. And the Gemara goes right along and says. When the rabbis would leave the yeshiva of Rav Chista, this is what they would bless each other. They would explain Teilim 144 as that our cities our leaders are Latin. What does it mean our leaders are Latin? It's a matter of dispute between Rav Shmuel. And some say, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Lazar, Chad Amar Torah, our leaders in Torah, Mesubalim be mitzvot. Our leaders in Torah, and we should be laden with mitzvot. Chad Amar, Alufenu be Torah mitzvot, our leaders in Torah mitzvot, Mesubalim be yusurim. And we should be laden with suffering, because suffering, God forgives us for our sins.